Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of physiology which we are doing from Guyton. Today we are going to do chapter number 55 which is from a new unit that we are starting today is unit number 11 and here we are going to discuss spinal cord motor functions and cord reflexes. So basically neurophysiology ka part hai ye unit and uh, this chapter will particularly focus on the spinal cord or uh, motor function. Uh, also connected with the different reflexes of your body. So, the game is that the sensory information is integrated at all levels of the nervous system and causes appropriate motor response that be begin in the spinal cord and relatively simple muscle reflexes extend into the brain stem with more complicated responses. So, the story is that if uh, this is your body and uh, here is a stimulus at any part of your body, the first thing it uh, does is the sensory neurons are going to take it to the central nervous system. Okay, up central nervous system, may the first thing it enters is the spinal cord. Now, many of the reflexes are you know controlled at the level of the spinal cord, and some motor uh, reflex is initiated. So you either remove your hand from there or you show some reflex. So there is a sensory input and there is a motor command. But it is not uh, this simple all the time. Obviously, these sensory fibers aate hai, they also travel up to the higher centers in the brain. And the brain also command aati hai to the spinal cord ke how it has to be controlled and modulated. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss spinal cord control of muscle function. Muscles, which are motor units, which have contract, which are spinal cord, which are controlled control karta hai. Now, without special neuronal circuits of the cord, even the most complex motor control system in the brain could not cause any purposeful muscle movement. So, spinal cord is extremely important. Obviously, it is the relay center and it is the main communicator between all the peripheral organs and your top shot brain. So, if this is your finger, for example, the finger here is a muscle hoga, which has to contract and this finger has a receptor hai, which is uh, feeling temperature, pain, vibration, anything. So the sensory information goes to the spinal cord, gets processed here, also gets processed in coordination with the brain and higher centers and then messages come back here and then there is a motor response. So spinal cord is the key connector between different organs of your body and the higher centers in the central nervous system. So for example, there is no neuronal circuit anywhere in the brain that causes a specific to and fro movements of the legs that are required in walking. Instead, the circuits for those movements are uh, actually controlled in the spinal cord. So they're just telling you the importance of this chapter. Let us not belittle the role of brain. Now, we have to say that the spinal cord is not doing anything. The spinal cord is not doing anything. The brain is not doing anything. So, let us not belittle the brain. Okay? The brain gives direction that controls the sequential cord activities. For example, to promote the turning movement. So, basically, brain gives directions. That's very important. And the spinal cord coordinates. Okay? Now, organization of the spinal cord for motor function. How is the organization? You know this section. That's a typical section through the spinal cord. And you see there is a dorsal sensory route. There is a ventral motor route. Uh, neurons are hai, neurons are hai. You know the gray matter, the white matter. The cord gray matter is the major integrative area of the cord reflexes. So, Joby reflexes already, obviously, synapses, that's happening in the gray matter. This figure, 551, shows the typical organization of the cord gray matter in a single cord segment, obviously, section Liawa. Sensory signals enter the cord from the posterior or the dorsal root. So, this is from where the sensory signals enter into the spinal cord. After entering into the cord, every sensory signal travels to two separate destinations. Very important point. One branch of the sensory nerve terminates almost immediately in the gray matter of the cord and elicit a segmental cord reflex and the other number two um, uh, the other branch number two transmits signals to the higher levels of the nervous system so basically whatever uh, you are getting into the uh, sensory root or the posterior or the dorsal root this sensory information will be here the synapse on the local level par, and then it will also send branches up to the higher centers. Okay? Now, each segment of the spinal cord has several million neurons. So, her segment may, I mean, you see there are millions of neurons in there. And uh, basically, 
uh, aside from the sensory relay neurons as discussed in other chapters we have already done these chapters by the way the other two types of neurons that you must uh, understand are the anterior motor neurons and interneurons in me se kuch to naam se hi zahir hai ke anterior motor neuron uh, obviously anterior horns mein honge spinal cord ke and interneurons will be the connecting neurons okay so let's discuss both of them one by one the anterior motor neurons are located in each segment of the anterior horn of the एंटीरियर कार्ड कार्ड का जो एंटीरियर पार्ट है उसमें ग्रे मैटर में दीज आर दंटीरियर न्यूरोन्स लोकेटेड देयर एंड दे आर सेवल थाउजेंड ऑफ द न्यूरोन्स दैट आर फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड परसेंट लार्जर दैन मोस्ट ऑफ द अदर न्यूरोन्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट एंड दे आर कॉल द एंटीरियर हॉर्न मोटर न्यूरोन्स बेसिकली दे गिव राइस टू नव फाइबर्स दैट लीव द कार्ड बाई द वे ऑफ द एंटीरियर रूट्स एंड directly innervate the skeletal muscles the neurons are of two types alpha motor and gamma motor so basically ho hi raha hai ke dorsal side se dorsal root ke zariye sensory information aa rahi hai aur ye anterior neurons hain jo anterior root se exit kar rahe hain so they are going directly to the skeletal muscles basically okay so they are going to supply the skeletal muscles ab ye do tarah ke fiber so aapko entry pata lag gayi sensory information ki entry aur aapko exit pata lag gaya ab jo exit hai in neurons ko kehte hain anterior motor neurons and they are of two categories number one is the alpha motor neurons so alpha motor neurons give uh, rise to large alpha motor nerve fibers averaging about 14 micrometers a big ones okay these fibers branch many times after they enter in the muscle and innervate the larger skeletal muscles A stimulation of a single alpha nerve fiber excites from 3 to 700 skeletal muscle fibers and they are then collectively called the motor unit ki okay? अगर आप इस मोटर यूनिट को देखें सो अगेन लुक एट द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड देर इज अ डॉर्सल रूट सो दिस इज द सेंसरी इन्फॉर्मेशन कमिंग इन एंड दिस इज द एग्जैक्ट सो द एंटीरियर मोटर न्यूरोन्स आर हेयर एंड यू नो यू शुड नॉट हेयर द हेयर वी हैव अल्फा मोटर न्यूरोन द वन इन द ब्लैक एंड देन वी हैव द गैमा मोटर न्यूरोन्स ओके सो गैमा मोटर न्यूरोन्स आर ऑल्सो देयर एग्जिटिंग फ्रॉम द एंटीरियर हॉर्न ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड इनकी कॉन्ट्रेक्शन भी स्केल्टर मसल फाइबर इनकी एक्साइटेशन से स्केल्टर मसल फाइबर की कॉन्ट्रेक्शन होनी है अबाउट वन हैफ एज मैनी मच स्मॉलर गैमा मोटर न्यूरोन्स लोकेटेड इन दिसन कॉर्ड एंड चेयर हॉर्न सो दे आर प्रेडी यू नो पॉपुलेटेड देर एज वेल दे ट्रांसमिट इम्पल्स इज थ्रू स्मॉलर टाइप मोटर नव फाइबर्स विच आर कॉल्ड ए गैमा एंड दे फॉर दे आर कॉल्ड गैमा मोटर न्यूरोन्स ओके and uh, in the diameter is obviously less than the alphas and uh, they uh, supply specific muscle fibers which are called the interfusal muscle fibers and these fiber constitute the middle of the muscle spindle so they are basically going to supply towards the middle if you see here these are the gamma motor neurons okay so uh, that is basically the uh, entry input to the spinal cord and then the exit that is a basic organization okay but what we talked about up till now is the entry and the exit but then we also have interneurons which are present somewhere in the middle like this okay so if you look at the diagram here these are the exiting neurons these are the entering neurons but we have the connectors so we have the connectors as well and the connectors are called interneurons interneurons are present in all areas of the cord gray matter in the dorsal horns in the anterior horns as well as in the intermediate areas the cells are about 30 times as numerous as the anterior motor so they are much uh, higher in number than the motor control units they are very small uh, and highly excitable often exhibiting spontaneous activity uh, and capable of firing as rapidly as 1500 times per second so they are very active they have many interconnections with one another and the interconnections among the interneurons and the anterior motor neurons are responsible for most of the integrative action so as the name indicate i mean they are very important guys okay essentially all the different types of neuronal circuits are found in the interneuron pool and they can be diverging so that's not important thing to remember that's also in this heading which talks about the general organization of the spinal cord this is a very simple concept to get and the simplest concept is that there is entry via the sensory route there is exit via the motor route we have two types of fibers here alpha and gamma they go to the muscle spindle fibers and then there are interneurons so that's a very simply simplistic way of putting things in context now let's talk about some muscle sensory receptors and uh, how they play their role in uh, muscle contraction and the control system the proper control of muscle functions required not only the excitation of the muscle by the spinal cord 
but uh, it also require back the sensory information as a feedback kehne ki baat ye hai ki if this is your spinal cord and this is the muscle spindle obviously we know ki reflexes uh, is tarah se generate hote hain ki the spinal cord is passing you know anterior motor neurons to the muscles to contract lekin uh, spinal cord ko continuous uh, positioning ka exact sense hona chahiye ki what is the situation in the muscle so in simpler words uh, there has to be a feedback mechanism jo muscle se har waqt feed kar raha ho to the spinal cord ke what is the situation of the muscle and in accordance with that particular feedback then the spinal cord can behave aur ye sensory information jo muscle se jati hai uh, spinal cord tak it basically goes via two special uh, receptor systems and these are known as muscle spindles and golgi tendon aur is uh, agle kuch minutes mein hum inhi दो पर काफी डिटेल में बात कर रहे होंगे सो द मसल स्पिंडल्स आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड थ्रू आउट द बैली ऑफ द मसल एंड इट्स एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन टू द नर्वस सिस्टम अबाउट मसल लेंथ और रेट ऑफ चेंज इन लेंथ सो लेंथ बढ़ रही है तो इसका मतलब रिलैक्स फॉर्म में है मसल लेंथ कम हो रही है तो इट्स इन द कॉन्ट्रेक्टेड स्टेट सो दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज कैरी टू द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड बाय द मसल स्पिंडल्स द अदर कैटेगरी ऑफ रिसेप्टर विच आर प्रेजेंट रूटीनली इन आवर मसल्स आर द गोलजाय टेंडन ऑर्गन्स एंड दे आर लोकेटेड इन द मसल टेंडन एंड दे ट्रांसमिट इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द टेंडन टेंशन और द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ टेंशन सो अगेन इफ देर इज कॉन्ट्रेक्शन देर विल बी इंक्रीज टेंशन इफ देर इज रिलैक्स इज टू दी सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग सो कंटिन्यूसली वी हैव यू नो अ सिस्टम जिसमें इन्फॉर्मेशन इज बींग ट्रांसफर्ड सो इफ यू लुक एट द डायग्राम हेयर Uh, these are the muscle spindles which are getting a lot of input and we will come back to this diagram in a minute when we discuss the text the signals from these two receptors are almost entirely for the purpose of intrinsic muscle control they operate almost completely at a subconscious level so you are not even aware of these or aapke muscle se information spinal cord tak ja rahi hai even so they transmit tremendous amount of information not only to the spinal cord but also to the cerebellum and the higher centers okay now receptor function of the muscle spindle kis tarah se muscle spindle kaam karta hai maine aapko bataya there are two types of receptor systems in the muscle the first one is the muscle spindle so let's talk about it the muscle spindle ka structure the organization of the muscle spindle is shown in the figure 553 jo main keh raha tha ki we'll come back to the figure in a minute Each spindle is 3 to 10 mm long. It is built around 3 to 12 tiny intrafusal muscle fibers that are pointed at their ends and attached to the glycocalyx. So that's the kind of arrangement that we have the muscle fibers and then the whole muscle spindle and its relationship to the large extrafusal muscle fibers. So if you look at the diagram, these are the intrafusal muscle fibers just say system originate kar raha hai and then surrounded by are the extrafusal muscle fibers each interfusal muscle fiber is tiny skeletal muscle fiber however the central region of each of these fiber that is the area midway between the two ends has few or no actin and myosin so that particular area is non contractile therefore it does not contract when the ends do instead it functions as a sensory receptor described later so agar uh, isko holistic concept mein dekhe so you know at different parts of your body you have a specialized cell so for example if you talk about heart uh, heart mein myocardium hai and these cells can contract apart from the specialized cells which are present for example in the sinoatrial node these are uh, you know uh, advanced ya changed or differential type of cardiac myocytes which have now changed their function they are not meant for contraction but they are meant for uh, some other job pace making activity of the heart similarly in the muscle the intra, these particular areas jahan pe ye muscle spindles generate ho rahe they are the muscles which have lost their contractility because they do not have actin and myosin but rather they are sensory nerve endings type of fibers now the end portion that do contract are excitable by a small gamma motor nerve fiber so it's still Uh, there are gamma motor nerve fibers to the end portion so uh, to the end there is contractile activity intrafusal fibers ki baat ho rahi hai and the extrafusal fibers are obviously supplied by the alpha fibers but the middle portion is largely sensory so this is where the spindle fiber actually initiate okay in the middle of the intrafusal fibers so that's important information for you these gamma motor nerve fibers are also called the gamma efferents because they are uh, bringing about the contraction of the muscles and uh, this is different from the alpha efferents which supply the extrafusal so that 
overall is a very important diagram for you because this diagram may uh, different concepts which uh, you have to grasp include that spindle fibers jo hai, they originate in the interfusal fibers and the interfusal fibers ka jo center hai, that has the sensory connection in the form of spindle fibers or in he interfusal fibers ke jo ends hai, they are supplied by the motor uh, nerve endings and gamma in particular and therefore the ends can contract however the alpha motor fibers supply the extra fusal skeletal muscle so very good diagram to understand all these concepts now how the muscle spindle now we know that when we say muscle spindle we are talking about intrafusal uh, muscle fibers and the center of the intrafusal muscle fiber the receptor portion of the muscle spindle is the central portion we now know this concept and as shown in this diagram, just go behind the and the other one just go be Sensory fibers originate in this area and they are stimulated by stretching of the midpoint of the spindle. One can readily see that the muscle spindle receptors can be excited in two ways. Number one, lengthening of the whole muscle, and number two, even if the length of the entire muscle does not change, the contraction of the end point. So as soon as there will be contraction and changes at these two ends, there will be change of pressure and tension in the central area, and this will be picked up by the sensory system. Okay, two types of sensory endings, the primary afferent and the secondary afferents are found in this region. So afferent is anything which is going towards the nervous system. That is the term for nervous system, uh, anything which is directed towards the nervous system. So there is sensory uh, nerve ending, this type and this type, both of them are afferent and they're going towards the nervous system. Okay, now the primary ending in the center of the receptor area, a large sensory fiber encircles the central portion each uh, interfusal fiber ke aspas forming the primary afferent ending or spiral ending these nerve fibers uh, are type 1a fibers and then the secondary nerve endings which are type 2 fibers they both uh, they have different sizes and uh, therefore they are uh, designated by different names and both of them go towards the uh, spinal cord the central nervous system now division of interfusal fibers into nuclear bag and nuclear chain fibers that's dynamic and static response of the muscle spindle these are also two types of muscle spindle interfusal fibers the nuclear bag muscle fibers one to three in each spindle in which the several muscle fiber nuclei are congregated and expanded in the form of bags in the central portion of the receptor area as shown as in, in the top of this figure it's time to go back to this figure now so Look at this diagram. For example, here we are looking at uh, intrafusal muscle fibers, and you see there are primary afferents which are going towards the central nervous system, and then there are secondary afferents which are going towards the central. Both of them are going towards the central nervous system. So this perhaps is the uh, elongated elongated view, yeah, uh, you know, magnified view of this particular portion. So if you look at this diagram now, you're looking at the intrafusal muscle fibers, and you see the afferents going towards the central nervous system okay the arrangement is different so if you look at this diagram for example you see there is a bag like arrangement just my boss are nuclei and boss are intrafusal muscle fibers get the form of bag like a structure okay and uh, so i mean if you can remember all these details that's fine and good for you then there are nuclear chain fibers which are three to nine in number which are about half as large as in diameter as that of the nuclear bag uh, apparatus okay the primary sensory nerve endings is excited by both the nuclear bag interfusal fibers as well as by the nuclear chain fibers so the primary nerve endings if you if you look at this diagram one more time these are the two types of uh, skeletal muscle interfusal fibers type 1 and type 2 just my bag manra just my bag name manra nuclear type uh, bag arrangement say uh, you have got the fibers going towards the central nervous system and from these as well so it is well covered both types of fibers are uh, well covered in terms of sensory transmission to the nervous system uh, this is another diagram. We'll come to that in a minute. The primary and secondary endings both respond to the length of the receptor, the static response. When the receptor portion of the muscle spindle is stretched slowly, as by the contraction of the endings, the number of the impulses transmitted from both primary and secondary endings increase almost directly proportional to the degree of stretching. Jitna zada contractile force hoga, utna hi zada transport transfer of sensory information hoga through the spindle fibers this effect is known as a static response well simple well, in medicine we have a lot of funny terminologies so this is one of them 
the primary ending but not the secondary ending respond to rate of change of receptor so all what that means is that the spindle fibers are not only stimulated by the contraction but also the rate of contraction affected and the rate means how frequently the things are happening so when the length of the spindle fiber increases suddenly the primary ending is stimulated powerfully this stimulus of the primary ending is called the dynamic response which means that the primary ending respond extremely actively to rapid rate of change so if it is happening very very quickly the information is transmitted to the central nervous system very very quickly that's the kind of uh, thing that you have to understand now control of intensity of the static and dynamic responses not important for you to remember then the next heading which you must master is the muscle stretch reflex the simplest manifestation of muscle spindle function is the muscle stretch reflex whenever a muscle is stretched suddenly excitation of the spindle fiber causes reflex contraction of large skeletal muscle fiber of the stretched muscle and of closely allied synergistic muscle so if this is a big muscle and uh, you can see it's a big belly and here is the muscle spindle fiber if there is initiation of a stretch to the muscle the spindle fiber carries the sensory information to the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord and goes into the spinal cord and then the motor fibers exit from the anterior horn and they go to the muscle and causes contraction of the muscle this is called a stretch reflex okay and the neural circuit involved in the stretch reflex is something that i've just told you it's largely monosynaptic pathway does not involve a lot of interneuron so this is monosynaptic and then the dynamic stretch reflex and the static static stretch reflexes the stretch reflex can be divided into two components the dynamic and the static the dynamic stretch reflex is elicited by potent dynamic signals transmitted from the primary sensory endings of the muscle spindle caused by rapid stretch or unstretch that is when a muscle is suddenly stretched or unstretched it's a strong signal to be transmitted so any change in position is basically being perceived by the central nervous system okay so that's easy concept here now damping function of the dynamic again not important damping for you role of the muscle spindle in voluntary motor activity to understand the importance of the gamma efferent system efferent means it is coming towards the muscle fibers one should recognize the 31 percent of all the motor nerve fibers to the muscles are type a gamma efferent fibers it's a big supply 31 percent of the whole supply whenever signals are transmitted from motor cortex or from any other area of the brain to the alpha motor neurons which are exiting from the anterior horn of the spinal cord in most instances is the gamma motor neurons are stimulated simultaneously as well so alpha is stimulated as well as gamma and this is called co-activation phenomena it's not very high yield stuff brain areas for the control of gamma motor system um, it's the cerebellum basal ganglia and cerebral cortex this is all that you have to remember now the muscle spindle system stabilizes body position during tense action now this is very important because this is the continuous input from the muscles to the central nervous system and one of the most important function of the muscle spindle system is to stabilize the body position during uh, any motor action to perform this function the bulboreticular facilitatory region uh, and its allied areas in the brain transmit excitatory signals through the gamma nerve fibers so again the details are not high yield for your exam all you need to remember is that spindle fibers are very important because they give routine information from the muscle fibers to the central nervous system okay now this was one uh, mechanism the other mechanism of sensory input from the muscle is the golgi tendons okay now golgi tendon organs abhi dekhte hain diagrammatically isko is an encapsulated sensory receptor through which muscle tendon fibers pass so if you look at the diagram here this is a diagram for golgi tendon and uh, uh, this is uh, showing you the golgi tendon organ is me se actually uh, tendon fibers pass ho rahe and then the sensory information is being transmitted to the spinal cord actually by the tendon so this is the tendon so any changes in the tension of the tendon is perceived by golgi tendon reflex so it is therefore named as golgi tendon organ tendon ke fibers isme se guzarte hain about 10 to 15 muscle fibers are usually connected to each golgi tendon organ and the organ is stimulated when the small bundle of uh, muscle fibers is tensed by contraction or by stretching 
Thus, the major difference in excitation of the Golgi tendon organ versus the muscle spindle is that the spindle detects muscle length and changes in the muscle length, while the tendon, the Golgi tendon, it measures and it perceives, it senses muscle tension rather than the muscle length. Okay, so that's a very important feature to understand. Otherwise, if you look at the diagram, then uh, you see these are the uh, initiation of Golgi tendon receptors, and then they go to the spinal cord via the posterior route. Uh, they have an inhibitory interneuron involved, and that goes to the skeletal muscle as an anterior motor neuron. So you have to keep the things in perspective with the general organization. So here we have here would be obviously the spindle muscle spindle fiber so they will detect uh, the length for example and the fibers which are sensory and placed in the tendon they will re uh, they will detect the change in tension of the muscle okay right transmission of impulses from the tendon organ in the central nervous system so signals from the tendon organ are transmitted through large rapidly conducting type 1 b nerve fibers that average about 16 Micrometers in diameter, not important for you to remember, only slightly smaller than those from the primary ending of the spindle fiber. These fibers, like those from the primary spindle endings, transmit signals into local areas around the cord and also give information to the cerebellum and the cerebellar uh, cortex and cerebral cortex, both of them. The local cord is, um, you know, experiencing signals that excites a single inhibitory interneuron that inhibits the anterior motor neuron. This local circuit directly inhibits the individual muscle without affecting the adjacent muscle. So this particular muscle will then be inhibited because this is an inhibitory uh, pathway which is now activated. So contraction here will stop. Okay? Uh, now this was in contrast to the spindle fibers if you remember. So spindle fibers may, if you look at the diagram again, sensory input jab gaya tha, then there was motor input and the contraction of the whole muscle. But in the Golgi tendon reflex, there is an inhibitory pathway which is activated. Right. When the Golgi tendon organ of a muscle tendons are stimulated by increased tension in connecting muscle, signals are transmitted to the spinal cord to cause uh, reflex inhibition. This is called a negative feedback. Because tension is increasing, so here it comes from here, inhibit this tension. Ko. Okay. When tension on the muscle and therefore on the tendon becomes extreme, the inhibitory effect from the tendon organ can also be so great that it leads to sudden reaction in the spinal cord that causes instantaneous relaxation of the entire muscle. And this is called lengthening reaction. If the tension is very high, then the spinal cord will say, shut up now. Now just relax the muscle. It's too much contraction. Possible role of tendon reflex to equalize contractile force among the muscle fiber. Uh, it's not a high yield heading, but anyways, another likely function of the Golgi tendon reflex is to equalize the contractile forces of the separate muscle fibers. Nah, bah, 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 bah. Don't confuse me, yaar. I want headings which are more conceptual. Function of the muscle spindle in the Golgi tendon organ is in motor control by higher levels of the brain. So, not only, I mean, if you look at this diagram, for example, it seems like every information is going to the spinal cord and coming back to the muscle. Also, if you look at this diagram, for example, it seems like the information is going from the muscle to the spinal cord and directly to the muscle. Yaha brain kai. As an ink, it's not connected with the higher centers. So this heading will then talk about how is it controlled by the higher centers. Although we have emphasized the function of the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ in the spinal cord control of motor function, these two sensory organs are also very importantly connected with the uh, you know higher centers of consciousness. For instance, dorsal spinocerebral tracts carry instantaneous information from the muscle spindle and Golgi tendon. So the pathways ascending as well as descending, they are very well connected with these uh, sensory input. Okay. Additional pathways which transmit similar information into reticular regions of the brain um, are also present. So the point is that these two types of sensory pathways, the spindle, muscle spindles and the Golgi tendons, they are not operating alone with the spinal cord. They are also operating in concert with the higher centers of consciousness. Okay. Uh, with this, let's move on to the next uh, heading, which is the flexor reflex and the withdrawal reflex. Upke limper, agar koi painful stimulus lagta hai, to aap hata dete How does that work? In the spinal 
और द डी सेलिब्रेट एनिमल ना वन वी से डी सेलिब्रेट एनिमल्स दीज आर द एनिमल्स जिनका सेरेबल हेमस्फेयर निकाला हुआ है ऑब्वियसली ऑलमोस्ट एनी टाइप ऑफ कोटेनियस सेंसरी स्टिमुलस फ्रॉम अ लिम इज लाइकली टू कॉज फ्लैक्सर मसल्स ऑफ द लिम टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यानी ब्रेन नहीं है बट फिर भी ब्रेन uh, निकाल दिया एक्सपेरिमेंटल एनिमल में और किसी भी लिम पर पिंच किया या कोई स्टिमुलस दिया सो फाइबर्स आर गोन गो टू द स्पैनल कॉर्ड इंटरन्यूरोन्स एंड देन बैक एंड द मसल टू इच विल हैपन सो दिस टाइप ऑफ रिफ्लैक्स इज दैन नोन इज द फ्लैक्सर रिफ्लैक्स इन इट्स क्लासिक फॉर्म द फ्लैक्सर reflex is elicited most powerfully by stimulation of pain nerve ending so if you uh, you know even if the brain is not working if you provide pain the spinal cord will respond okay so that's the kind of the flex or reflex if you look at the diagram here what happens if there is a painful stimulus it goes through the posterior horn of the spinal cord to the interneurons and then the fibers come back and uh, these fibers go to the skeletal muscle and they um, causes flexion of that particular area as called the flexor reflex very easy okay if some parts of the body um, other than one limb uh, is painfully stimulated that part will similarly with, will also be withdrawn from the stimulus so that's your basic withdrawal or flexor reflex now the neuronal mechanisms in, in included is all explained in this particular diagram and i can read it for you as well the left hand portion figure 55 9 this particular one shows the neuronal pathway in this instance a painful stimulus is applied to the hand as a result the flexor muscles of the upper arm become excited and the person withdraws the hand even if the brain is not working or it is not involved the pathways for eliciting the flexor reflex do not pass directly to the anterior motor neurons but instead they pass first into the spinal cord interneuron we we know this all story now okay the shortest possible circuit is three or four neuron pathway obviously i mean there is one neuron which is going through the dorsal system sensory then interneuron then a, a, maybe a few interneurons and then some excitatory tree neurons which are the anterior motor neurons and they are going to the skeletal so three to four neurons are basically involved okay now uh, that's it basically that you have to understand and uh, also remember that if you keep giving pain all the time to this person after a while the system is uh, you know uh, exhausted and there will be a time for muscle for fatigue and then there will be no response and if now at that particular time even if you uh, continue giving the pain stimulus this contraction goes down it drops down okay now pattern of withdrawal uh, during flexor reflex the pattern of withdrawal that result when the flexor reflex is elicited depends on which sensory now uh, this is not uh, in contact so don't worry about this head, uh, this paragraph now the crossed extensor reflex that's something different about 0.2 to 0.5 second after the stimulus elicits a flexor uh, reflex in one limb the opposite limb begins to extend this is called the crossed extensor so if you are so that's kind of if this is the left side of the body this is right side of the body so you are giving pain stimulus here so here will be flexion and here will be extension so the triceps will be excited and that excitation of triceps on the opposite side of the body is known as crossed extensor reflex okay now uh, the right hand portion uh, in the same diagram shows the neuronal circuits responsible for crossed extensor reflex demonstrating that signals from sensory nerve also cross to the opposite side of the body warna ye reflex kaise hota hai na obviously jo sensory signals hain dekhiye ye interneurons yahan opposite side pe aake connect ho rahe hain and then the anterior neurons from the opposite side are going to the opposite uh, you know limb and causing simply the opposite function right so that's the only thing that you have to remember with this particular heading nothing more than that then reciprocal inhibition and reciprocal innervation we previously pointed out that excitation of one group of muscle is often associated with inhibition of the other group and that is what is known as the antagonistic muscles so if for example this is your uh, humerus and then you have radio ulna here and these are the biceps here and these are the triceps so imagine ki aapke bicep bhi contract ho raha hai aur tricep bhi contract ho raha hai uh i mean the movement will be confused ke either it has to go flex or it has to go extend so usually what happens ke one one piece of muscles are being contracted the other one is relaxed okay that's called antagonistic muscle or the reciprocal inhibition for instance when a stretch reflex excites one muscle it often leads to stimulates inhibition of the antagonist muscle bicep contract ho raha hai to tricep relax karega and that is uh, important otherwise there will be rigidity 
ऑफ द जॉइंट जहां पे मसल्स एक्ट कर रहा है नाउ रिफ्लेक्सेस ऑफ पॉस्चर एंड लोकोमोशन ना पॉस्चर एंड लोकोमोशन रिफ्लेक्सेस ऑफ द कॉर्ड में जो बातें आपको याद रखनी है द पॉजिटिव सपोर्टिव रिएक्शन प्रेशर ऑन द फुट पैड ऑफ अ डी सेलिब्रेट एनिमल अगेन डी सेलिब्रेट एनिमल की इसलिए बात कर रहे हैं क्योंकि इसका ब्रेन निकाला हुआ है सेरेबल हेमिसफेयर सो वॉट एवर इज हैपनिंग इज बेसिकली हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड ओके इट कॉज इज लिम टू एक्सटेंड अगेंस्ट द प्रेशर अप्लाई टू द फुट इन डीट दिस रिफ्लेक्स इज सो स्ट्रॉन्ग दैट इफ एन एनिमल हुज स्पाइनल कॉर्ड हैज बिन ट्रांजेक्टेड फॉर सेवरल मंथस आफ्टर द रिफ्लेक्सेज हैव बिकम एग्जरेटेड इज प्लेस्ड ऑन द फीट इवन देन इट works so jaise paon zameen pe rakha the spinal cord gets a message that there is a pressure and the person may be i mean it want to walk or something so immediately there is limb extension and support from the spinal cord that's called the positive supportive reaction the positive supportive reaction involves a complex circuit in the interneurons similar to the circuit responsible for the flexor and the cross extensor reflexes the locus of the pressure of the pad of the foot determines the direction in which uh, you know it has to move the magnet reaction so that is all happening basically within the spinal cord okay now the cord writing reflexes when a spinal animal is laid on its side it will make uncoordinated movements to try to reach itself to the standing position side pe aapne usko karwat deke lita diya and uh, the cord is helping to get signal and uh, helping and identifying that the person wants to perhaps stand up and walk so these are all things which are happening in the body as i always say the nervous system is basically much more complicated than than we understand okay so um, there are many concepts i mean uh, which require further deep dives but for the purpose of this chapter this discussion uh, suffice is stepping and walking movements now rhythmical stepping movements are frequently observed in the limbs of the spinal animals indeed even when the lumbar portion of the spinal cord is separated from the remainder of the cord and a longitudinal section is made down the center of the cord to block the neuronal connection between the two sides so basically they are taking out the spinal cord cutting it from the middle so the connections are lost on both half so whatever is happening on the left side is now independent of whatever is happening on the right side now forward flexion of the limb is followed by um follow a second or so later by backward extension so aap jab walk karte ho so there is a continuous flexion extension movement of the two lower limbs uh, also of the upper limbs and that uh, happens at the level of the spinal cord this oscillation back and forth between flexor and the extensor muscles can uh, occur even after the sensory nerves have been cut so how is it being controlled then the sensory signals from the foot pads and from the position sensors around the joints play a very important role in getting this movement done in fact the cord mechanisms to control for stepping can even be more complex obviously they are very complex for instance if the top of the foot encounters an obstruction during the forward thrust the forward thrust will stop temporarily so that's too much for you to remember at the moment so not that they are going to test you on your undergrad exam for this uh, the whole overall story is the fact that the walking movements just me aapka paon aage piche aage piche and the upper limbs aage piche move kar rahe hain that's all being controlled at the level of the spinal cord okay now if a well healed uh, is spinal animal with a spinal transection in the neck uh, above the forelimb area of the cord and then healed is held up from the floor and its legs are allowed to dangle they stretch so I I would suggest leave this paragraph as well they are trying some uh, experimental details to be uh, discussed with you but not important for the examination purposes I'm leaving the blue boxes because that's what uh, we will cover separately in clinical scenarios okay so all the very best uh, we will see each other in the next video till then take care of yourself